I know how to help you find your divine path and I'm gonna share that with you guys. I believe that you and everyone deserve to live your best life and it's possible. I think a lot of people are practicing the art of not having this feeling or monster join them. Good morning. Good morning. I'm Kristen. Nice to meet you. We're back. I'm still figuring out what to do with my life. I do want to spend some time talking about this topic because I think it affects us all in our lifetimes where we come to a conclusion that we are unhappy. Whatever we're doing is not satisfying us anymore. We're not interested in it anymore. And then there's this fear and anxiety and then you have to, <laughs> and then that old self has to die and a new self has to come through. I think there's many more aspects and processes to that, but pretty much that's what I'm going through. And you're probably watching this because you know me from streaming. A few years ago, streaming live on Twitch was just not interesting to me at all anymore. It wasn't satisfying me the same way that it used to when I first started. And I was like, damn, I want to live this life not losing a single second to doing anything that I don't want to do. So I got to figure out what, not figure out, flow into, I'm a stay flow into uh, the next path. And this feels very similar, or it has the last year, two years. It feels very similar to how I felt when I was in university and I realized that, oh my gosh, I get to live my life for me. I don't have to live my life for approval of my father and become a doctor. I don't have to live my life for approval of my mentors and become a businesswoman lawyer. Like I can figure out how to be on my own and make my passions and interests um, work for me and really carve out a new career in a new industry. And so like live streaming, gaming live streaming wasn't really a career when I first got into it. And I'm so grateful to have rode that roller coaster of that experience. And I'm so proud that that industry has exploded and now there's so many people that can earn a living doing what they love. It's just absolutely fantastic. But now I experienced the same thing where it's like the layers of doing that job, whatever job you're in, whatever industry you're in, um, and the expectations of the people around you, the community, your friends, your family, and your yourself and your attachment to that old identity just got so heavy. And I was like, this is not who I am. This is not interesting to me anymore. It's not lighting me up. And so I'm going through it round two. Like I literally thought that once you found your passion, you were good for life. Like I used to tell my stream, I'm like, guys, don't worry. I'm going to be streaming until I'm 69 years old. Like this is a lifetime process. Hi, I love you. Can we just wait one second? We're going to go. All right. I'm going to take you to the park. Um, I thought that once you figured out what your passion was, <laughs> That's not too annoying. Once you figure out what your passion is, you're set for life. And that is not the case. I hate to break it to you, but we are human beings. And the only thing that is constant in this flux of life is change. That's it. That's it. And if I think about it too much, it's a little bit overwhelming. But we just don't think about it too much. We're going with the flow. So I'm back. I don't know if any of you guys remember, I did this like Curious Kitty series. This cycle feels very similar where I wasn't interested in playing Counter-Strike anymore. So I spent a year just figuring out the things that I was interested in and trying all of them. So trying scuba diving, going horseback riding again, polar dipping, meeting new friends, rock climbing. I'm just doing all the things to just get my mind, body, spirit in resonance, and then also creating this new character that doesn't feel lethargic, that doesn't feel drained, that is learning new things. Like I've read seven books this year already, and I'm just like fully engaging life while at the same time bringing peace and love to it as well. And I was on a podcast recently and I totally realized that I have a system. I have a system for people if you are feeling tired, uninspired, non-directional, confused, um, like you're not in your divine path. Like I know how to help you find your divine path. And I'm going to share that with you guys today on today's video because I love 
to teach. And I believe that you and everyone deserve to live your best life and it's possible. So out with the old, that work has to be hard, out with the old, that everything can't be easy, fun, and filled with grace because I'm gonna show you how it can be easy, fun, and filled with grace. And you can align with something that brings out like your genius. Like we all, every single person on this planet has genius in them. And so it's unlocking that and tuning into that is a superpower. So we're gonna talk about that today, today. Because when I realized that I had a system, I was like, oh, 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 I got something for you. In the meantime, it's my outfit today. And I am going to go and get some groceries. I'm out of maple syrup, so I have to leave the house. Take Gary to the park. Probably gonna go and visit my parents. Maybe grab one of the boxes that I'm gonna give to the women's shelter. Yuri, why do you look so funny? Yuri, okay. Hatchback is so that Yuri can fit in the back of the car. I love my car. Okay, while my car is heating up, we're gonna talk about the first system, yeah. How I solved finding what I was passionate about and creating a new career for myself. The first thing that I did was I wrote down a list of all the things that I was interested in, okay? So like, things that I've ever been interested in. Cars, crystals, architecture, gaming, uh, like supporting and helping and loving people, serving the world, nature, hiking, dogs, cats, horses, um, technology, future studies, sci-fi, like whatever your interests are, write down a list of every single interest that you can think of, okay? So the second list is all the things that you would like to learn about. So take your interests now and what of your interests would you like to spend more time learning things on? And the next list, you're gonna write down every single one of your skills. Like, what are your skills? What do you already know? Like, what classes are you studied in? Uh, what kind of, do you have special driver's licenses? Uh, are you skilled with photography, videography, editing, Photoshop, graphic design? Like, write out a list of all the skills you can think of. It could be people skills, public speaking, leadership qualities, working with animals, whatever your skills are, write all those down. And then you're gonna do another list. What skills would you like to learn? And what school skills are you interested in taking? Are there a specific course you'd like to take, etc.? So you're gonna write down all of those things and we're just gonna leave them for now, okay? Let, let this exercise be to invite in new paths in your life that are gonna take advantage of the most amount of your skills while allowing you to grow into new skills and have it all be encompassed in your interests. So that's the first system. I just did one of mine. I did another one, I updated it because I'm going through this renaissance again and I'll share it with you. Hey, bought my groceries, that went really well. And then I decided to go to the mall. My Reiki girl uh, is to buy donation only and I paid her, but I also told her I would buy her a book because I keep thinking of her when I think of this book, which is uh, Braiding Sweetgrass, put it right here. It's such a good book. I've been reading it. I'm like 50% of the way through. Um, looks like this and it's indigenous wisdom scientific knowledge and the teachings of plants and it's just such a pleasure to read like the stories in it are just totally a beautiful way of reframing your understanding of the world and lens and framework for nature and yeah it's just so beautiful and um it's funny because my uh kim oh yeah she, my reiki girl is the one i met when I was hole punching in the lake randomly. And then I got Reiki with her the other day. It was so nice. I wanted to give her this book and she actually studied indigenous studies in school, which is hilarious. She doesn't know about this book. Now I get to give it to her and, oh, you getting comfy back there, girl. You getting cozy. Yeah, I need to get a bigger bed. I usually have a papa on back there for her, but 
uh, yeah, there's a lot of things. I have a lot of things in a lot of different places right now. Okay, it is time for my second system that I use to identify what I should be doing, what is my calling, and what I should be working towards. And this one might sound a little bit of counter counterintuitive because I think a lot of people are practicing the art of not having this feeling or monster join them. But I actually look at this emotion as a bit of a superpower and a bit of like a clear guidance into what you should be doing or what you desire to be doing. So that is jealousy. Jealousy, the green monster coming into your life and filling you with jealousy. I used to be so embarrassed to be someone that was jealous. I used to really shun my jealous feelings or jealous thoughts. And uh, I definitely had more of them when I was younger. Like I think they fade to a degree, but I now use them as a guidance system. So when I'm noticing that certain people elicit this response in me, which is very unlike me because I'm very like zen and non-judgmental and like I'm pretty in love with myself and life. But when I get this wave of jealousy towards a person, place or thing, I've really started to pay attention to it. And it's because I believe that is my spirit honing in and cluing in on the qualities, the lifestyle, the job, the recognition, the acknowledgement that it desires and it wants and believes that it can create for itself. The last time that I was jealous of someone, I was like looking at this, I was like, oh, why do they just bug me? Like, well, this person just triggers me so much. This is so unlike me, what is this coming from? And I had this thought in meditation where it's like, this person has the qualities that like you haven't cultivated yet in your life. And if you do, it's going to be really positive. And so obviously meditation is just an incredibly important technique for all of us to learn because our inner divided guidance is the best guidance. But in the meantime, I think you can use the system that we're talking about to get closer to knowing what lights you up and what to do and what's your purpose. So I don't necessarily believe everyone has a purpose either. My beliefs are subject to change and they're very flexible. The only thing that I believe in is myself in all honesty. And that's something that I've only cultivated recently because I realized that no one knows. Everything is just the best explanation currently for something. And the only thing that I can know is my own ability and my own mind and my own self. And so cultivating knowledge of self and your capacity and your limitations and your boundaries and your skills is like one of the most like sacred things I've ever done, I think. So up to this point. Um, so with this system of jealousy, the practice that came to me when I was in meditation was to visualize the person and we're actually really good friends too, which is ironic, but visualize the person and visualize all of the qualities that you feel very jealous of, whether it's their hair, uh, the way they speak, the line of work they're in, the lifestyle they have, the relationship they have, any of these things, the type of stuff they make or create, their creativity, their freedom of expression. Like write down all the things that you find the most triggering about them and just look at that list <laughs> for a second. And then I wrote a page in my journal where I just wrote out the story as if I already have all those things and I already have all those qualities because I believe that jealousy shows us what we desire and then what we desire in life is something that is attainable for us. I don't believe that this world it gives us desires that are going to be unfulfilled or can't be pursued. I believe that when we have desire for things and we understand that it's not based in 
what our family or friends or society expects of us, but it's a true desire within us. That's a really, really good place to start and a good path to follow. If you can't think of what those things are, yeah, check in with your jealousy and make a list. And then I made this story as if I was myself plus those qualities and I wrote down like a, in present tense, I have a healthy, loving, fun, free relationship. I, I'm just making an example. I drive a really phenomenal car and I love what I do and I feel like I'm on the leading edge of content and learning and I'm really healthy and I go to the gym and I'm excited to the go to the gym and I am in love with myself and I'm in love with my body and all my body practices are ones of honor and reverence for myself and they don't come from a place of lack but rather just a desire to be more in tune with myself and with this planet and write down a list as if you are the things that are of your highest expression and then also include some of the things that were from that jealous list. And just imagine what it would be like if you were the qualities that you're jealous of and if you had that. And I believe through imagination and imaginal techniques, especially when you imagine before bed or in meditation or after orgasm or during, it really kind of puts in motion, this is another one of my beliefs, energy and your subconscious. If you don't want to believe in God, that's okay. But you're like subconscious, your super consciousness, like that's operating your program below everything is taking in all this information. And now it's going to process like a set of perfect steps to grow you, expand you, challenge you, help you build the network and help you build the group of people that are going to support creating that aspect of yourself or manifesting that dream life. And I'm, I'm pretty careful with using the, the word manifestation because I think a lot of people just take it like you can make a vision board and then you can sit on your couch and then one day someone's going to knock on your door and give you a yacht. And for all I know, you might have already been able to achieve that. But my experience of manifestation is tuning in deeply with who I am, releasing all of my identity related to other people, to my history so far, to my life so far, to myself, dropping that and getting quiet and then doing systems like this or exercises like this where I can tune in to like, what do I really like? What do I really desire? What do I desire? If I'm not desiring to please people. <laughs> what do I desire? And I don't think that that's asked enough, uh, especially for women, because we get caught in a state of service and people pleasing. And that's true for men too. So once you understand what your desire is and you set a vision for yourself, just be open to the little, I guess you could call it like an itch, like the little itch that you get that's telling you to go for a cold plunge or that's telling you to sign up for that class or that's telling you to do a journal prompt or to reach out to that friend or whatever it is and say yes to that because whether you believe in God or not there's a subconscious that's operating and it has a desire for you to be happy, to be comfortable, to be safe, to be fulfilled, to release all of those incredible endorphins into our system. And it will work on all the information that you give it to create a path to create that. Like get your ego working for you instead of against you. Good morning. This is my outfit today. Dun, 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 dun. These are Hara, the label uh, top and bottom. They're awesome. Uh, I think they're from Australia. They took me forever to get them in the mail when I ordered them last year. Um, but they're so great. I'm drinking my roasted cocoa beans and I've got a podcast, three minutes, that I'm recording. Mm. My mentor's daughter is co-hosting a women's podcast for her business school. And so I said that I would do an interview with her and I didn't prepare. I don't think there was anything prepared to, I'm just going to be myself. I'm looking forward to being on a podcast. I love doing podcasts with people because I love talking to people and I love discussing different things. Who knows what's going to come out of me during this. I'm going to do a little wiggle, 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 dance, 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 dance. It is the morning and we're going to have a great day. Pew, pew, pew.
Pew, pew, pew. I already did my affirmations, reading, breath work, meditation. Haven't done my yoga yet, but we'll get there. That wiggle was enough for me. Thea, why are you the cutest? He, in the last couple of weeks, has just started this like lurking thing where he just stays in the next room and then just watches me do whatever I'm doing. It's really cute. Okay, apparently the podcast starts in 30 minutes, so we're gonna do some yoga flow. Ow! I also have an animal flow that I really like to do, but I'll save that for another video because that's like more of my cardio and strength. Yeah, I'm all about like really minimal exercises. Like I keep my body like slim with eating healthy food. I don't eat processed foods. I don't eat very much sugar. Walking has been my exercise and then a little bit of yoga, Pilates, horseback riding. That kind of thing. Oh, Peter's coming to say hi. Who's this? Hi, okay. This is his happy place. Oh, it's always over my shoulder. He, like, his favorite thing is to get fully burrowed in my hair. Okay, can make them kiss. Come on, you're in. Peter kissy. Good morning. Peter, it's your time to shine. Peter. How do you like your onesie? I've got him in a leash right now, so he doesn't jump. Oh my god, so cute. The little thing has little snaps. So he can still poop and pee, but then he can't lick his incision. How nice is that, Peta? Don't you just love it so much? This is the best. <sighs> Listening to music. Oh, dancing and walking with Yuri. And there's like a little hints of ecstasy that I feel when I'm out in nature, especially with a dog, seeing how much she appreciates it and enjoys it. There was a bald eagle that was flying over so high. They fly so high. Uh, yeah, I just feel great. Feeling lit, feeling fine. I just can't believe how many free, accessible ways there are in this world to get high. <laughs> I just love cultivating my life. So I just have these moments that are so pure. And you feel so connected and so at peace. Oh, I love dancing and playing with Yuri and seeing the sunshine out and it's cold and Oh, I just feel so alive. So I'd share this moment with you. I'm gonna hug a tree now. Which tree should I hug? You know, I don't usually hug little ones. Let's hug this little baby. This is funny. Come here. I don't know if you've ever had a hug. I'll give you one. <laughs> I usually like to press my third eye to the tree and just imagine with every inhale, Taking the energy in of the tree and then every exhale, letting out any energy that's not serving me down through the tree into the roots where it gets alchemized into something wonderful. My mom and I just finished dinner. We had a nice little meal at Cactus Club and now we're watching the skaters. I don't think I'm gonna be skating tonight. <laughs> I wish it were warmer, but so fun.
These are sweet moments with Miss Pita. She's just having a little nap, giving his meds. He's taking an anti-inflammatory, and it's just so precious. It's just sleeping. This is my heaven, my bliss, my solace. God bless the world when you have a cat on your heart. That's all I need, really. I'm a, I'm a simple woman. It's about to be 2202 2022. Little new moon vortex going on here, PETA. What are we putting into manifest? I am manifesting having a clear way for me to use my skills to serve this world and the planet and the people. I just want to bring love and light in all my content, all the people, and not just the people, all the animals and the planet. Like I want to facilitate people reconnecting with themselves and then in doing so, recognizing the importance of reconnecting with other beings and this planet as a whole and creating an abundance economy and society. That's something that I'm really passionate about. Like we have all the resources for everyone to be fed and sheltered and educated and clothed. We have the tech to do it. We just need to do it. And that's what I think about a lot. So here I am just out here in the world thinking about those things. That's what I'm manifesting. I'm also manifesting a beautiful home that I feel grounded and settled in that I can use as a jumping off point and manifesting a really healthy, loving relationship with no qualms and stress and really want to do like a family trip, like a travel, like go to Japan with my family or something like that. I've been trying to stay like out of making goals or manifesting anything lately and just be living like moment to moment in my heart. But sometimes it is good to think about like what I desire to have and to create and to build. So in March, when I get back from Egypt, we're going to have a home, PETA. We're going to have a home.